last week my video expose on Nestle and their horrible, disturbing practices in Malaysia that are leading to obesity went viral. And about a million people watched the video, some 17,000 people, mostly in Malaysia, shared it on their Facebook, and Nestle actually responded. Now that prompted me to do some further digging into what Nestle is doing, and what I found is disturbing. That's what I'm going to talk about in this video. See, Nestle says that their drink Milo is a health drink. They run ads telling kids to drink Milo every single day. They say that Milo gives you energy. What they don't say is that Milo actually makes you fat, that no real athlete would put this shit in their body, and that that energy comes from sugar spikes. This is milk, and this is actually Nestle milk. So see, Nestle, I don't dislike all your products. Your milk is actually pretty good. I wish you would stick to milk rather than coming up with useless crap like Nesquik and Milo. Now, most kids in America and Europe drink milk because we know that milk can have a good effect on kids. Milk has natural sugars, lactose. It's a natural sugar. Nestle gets parents in Asia and the developing world to add this crap to milk, Milo. So Nestle's press release says they try to put six grams of sugar in a glass of Milo. Not true. At the back of a Milo tin in Malaysia, it actually says says, add three teaspoons of Milo. Three teaspoons of Milo is roughly nine grams of sugar. Now, you want to know what nine grams of sugar looks like? Nine grams of sugar is roughly this. This are Nestle bonbons. This is a candy that Nestle markets. Each one has three grams of sugar. Candy itself is fine. My kids will eat this maybe once every two weeks or so. But Nestle's advertising is basically telling moms in Malaysia to add Milo to kids' milk, which is the equivalent of putting one, two, three bonbons in a glass of milk before sending that kid off to school. Now, what do you think that does to this kid's body, to this kid's cognitive functioning? This much sugar comes really close to the daily recommended sugar allowance for an adult, which is 25 grams. A glass of Milo, 20 grams of sugar. But that's only the start of the bullshit. Everybody in Malaysia knows that most Malaysians don't just drink Milo with milk. They often take Milo powder and add this to it. This is sweetened condensed milk. In Malaysia, because of Nestle's marketing that says Milo is healthy, people feel it's justified to add sweetened condensed milk on top of their Milo, creating what is an in fact a sugar bomb with up to 40 grams of sugar into a child in the morning before sending them to school. By the way, Milo isn't just bad because of its sugar content. One of the primary ingredients in Milo is something called maltodextrin. I want you to Google that, maltodextrin. This is what Nestle is having us put into the bodies of Malaysian children. Now, if you think Nestle is content with just screwing up kids' milk drinking habits in the developing world, think again. This is what a reader sent me from Australia. In Australia, the Nestle ads for Nesquik, their chocolate milk drink, says, make ordinary milk into extraordinary. Ordinary milk is a nutrient-dense drink that's healthy for kids. But Nestle is getting kids to pour this crap called Nesquik into their milk. Now, you want to know the sugar content of Nesquik? Check this out. In 11 grams of Nesquik, they are 8.8 .8 grams of sugar. That's 80% sugar, which is why in Britain, the government banned Nestle from advertising Nesquik as a great start to a child's day. Now, it would be disturbing enough if Nestle was simply, as a massive food company, screwing up the way kids drink milk, but they are also screwing up breakfast. So this is a breakfast cereal from Nestle called Strawberry Minis, right? Strawberry Minis, there's a picture of a strawberry here. It looks healthy in every way, but then you read the ingredient label. And by law, Nestle has to list ingredients in order of most common. Here's the ingredient label for Strawberry Minis. Number one ingredient, sugar. Number two ingredient, palm oil. Number three ingredient, glucose syrup. Number four ingredient, maltodextrin. Number five ingredient, cornstarch. Number six ingredient, salt. You don't get to strawberry till number seven, and it's strawberry powder, 0.3%. 0.3%, one three hundred of this is actual strawberries. Nestle, why don't you be honest and just call this sugared maltodextrin minis? At least it'd be truth in your advertising. Now, in the press release, Nestle justifies the addition of sugar in this way. It's to maintain the taste that Malaysians are used to. That's like a drug dealer saying, I have to keep giving my client cocaine because he's used to the high of cocaine which is an actual apt example because scientific studies are now showing that sugar is as addictive as cocaine. Consuming sugar produces effects similar to that of cocaine, altering mood, possibly through its ability to induce reward and pleasure, leading to the seeking out of sugar.
Nestle put sugar in their products because it gets you hooked on them so you keep buying Nestle products, which is why their stock is continuously growing the more addicted you get. Nestle has successfully made Malaysia the world's highest per capita consumers of Milo. Nestle's mission and vision say this, to be the world's leading nutrition, health and wellness company. Let's think about that. If the world's leading nutrition, health and wellness company is telling our children to pump this into their body, what does this say about the future of the human race? So Nestle, I want you to understand, I am not at war with you. We, the 17,000 people who shared my video, the millions who viewed it, we all are at war with bad health and obesity. It's killing us, literally. It's making our kids obese. It's reducing the performance of our children in school. All we want you is to be on our side and to live up to your damn mission. And that means being truthful in your advertising and not putting craptastic sugary like this and calling it food. Now, Nestle has been in controversies before. There was the baby powder controversy. Millions of babies malnourished because Nestle convinced women in India and Africa to feed their babies Nestle baby powder rather than breast milk. There is the water controversy in the United States where Nestle has become the world's biggest supplier of bottled water and in many cases convincing people that they need to buy expensive plastic bottled water which ultimately causes mass plastic pollution, huge greenhouse contribution, rather than drink the water from their tap, which in many places is actually clean. There's the Nesquik controversy in the UK where Nestle was banned from saying Nesquik is a great start to your day. All of these controversies were exposed. Nestle had to change practices because people like you spoke up. People like you would not let a large corporation get away with the lies. Which is why I really appreciate you guys who shared that last video. There was something Nestle said in that press release that I really liked and we gotta give them credit for. They said, in line with the ever-evolving needs of our consumers, we continuously make efforts to produce healthier and tasty products. You know what this means, people of Malaysia, Australia, Indonesia, the Philippines. Nestle says they're listening to you, so make your voices heard. Share this video. Dub this video in your native language. You can even take the script from this video and the previous video. Act it out yourself. Put it up on your YouTube channels. You get the views. Share it with your friends on WhatsApp. Share it on Facebook. Spread this video. Nestle says they are listening to you. Let's see if that's true or it's another Nestle lie. Thank you all in advance for sharing this. And Nestle, I look forward to your next press release.